Hi, welcome to Better Done Yourself. Today we're going to make some homemade ginger ale. The ingredients that you need for homemade ginger ale are ginger, organic sugar, lemons or limes if you like, a tablespoon of salt, and a ginger bug. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about making ginger bug. Um, this is mine. You can go research it and find out about yours. Gallon of boiling water. first step in making the ginger ale is to chop up the ginger. This obviously is quite a bit of ginger. I like ginger. I use a lot of ginger. But we'll need probably, I don't know, about, this is probably enough for a gallon of ginger ale. But chop it. Chop it as finely as you can. Give it a, give it a good mince. This will take a couple of minutes and you need a sharp knife. You can do this in, the, in a Vitamix. You can do this in your Cuisinart. Um, I just find it's quick to do it with my big knife. Once you've got your ginger chopped up and your water's boiling, add the ginger. Basically what we're going to do is make a, a sweet tea out of, the, out of the ginger. So we'll boil the ginger and add the sugar. This is a cup of sugar I'm adding. Remember our, our recipe is a gallon of water, five ounces, six ounces of ginger, and a cup of sugar. And we're going to boil this for 10-15 minutes. You'll kind of get a feel for how much you like to boil this step. Once you've got the, the ginger tea made, you're going to want to strain it. This is a six quart Lexan and a wire strainer that I've got that fits nicely. Just let this drip for a little while so we can get all the ginger tea out of it at this point. I'm going to top this up with just some fresh water. This helps cool it off a little bit too. I'm going to take this right up to six quarts. Next add the lemon juice. I'm using two lemons for six quarts of ginger ale. And as I mentioned before, a tablespoon of salt. This seems like a lot of salt, but again, this is this is six quarts of of beverage we're making here. Final, the last ingredient is the ginger bug itself. The ginger bug you saw earlier wasn't a, a great culture, so I'm using this one. Um, this is just a, my smaller backup one that I keep. When I opened that one, I realized that it was it had no fizz. It didn't. When you open that jar, you'll really get a like a pop sound because it's um, kept in the refrigerator, and it will continue to grow slowly. Um, it'll continue to ferment slowly. Um, so I'll stir in my, my ginger bug culture, but then I want to keep my ginger bug culture in the fridge, my, my jar of ginger bug, so I'm going to need to keep that alive. So I'm going to add enough water to, or enough ginger tea to top it up, just a teaspoon of my organic sugar, seal it up nice, and I'll pop this back in the fridge for next time I make ginger beer. Once I've got all the ingredients in the in the ginger beer, I'm going to bottle it. So you can use it. These are old kombucha bottles that I save. I make my kombucha in these. Um, I make my ginger beer in them. You uh, can decide what you want to keep it in. Basically, what you need though is something that is going to is a nice sturdy bottle. I like a, a single serving size. These are um, 12 ounce kombucha bottles. And then um, go ahead and fill them up with your now ginger bug inoculated ginger tea and what we're going to do is seal these up tight and put them away to ferment. The fermentation of the sugar by the ginger bug will create the carbonation, will reduce the basically the, the calories in the in the soda. The, the, the ginger really is sweetened by the sugar and but the the bulk of the sugar is really eaten up by the by the ginger bug and gives you the nice carbonation. Yet there's some residual sugar left from the fermentation process, but it, this isn't going to be a real sweet ginger ale like you're like you're used to dealing with the you know the products that you buy on your supermarket shelf. Um, depending on how long you ferment it for, depends on how sweet you end up drinking it and how carbonated the final product is. You can cap these up. The reused kombucha caps don't work great. These are nice. These are little two-piece caps. I've got a link below where you can pick these caps up. 
Um, but I found that these are real nice. I take them apart and run them through the dishwasher and then just put them back together when I'm bottling up my kombucha and bottling up my ginger beer. But I found this is a great system for my fermented beverages using these, these reusable caps. Another option might be to use swing top bottles. Um, you've seen swing top bottles that like the some people call them like a Grosch style type of a beer bottle where you've got a, this is a 16 ounce swing top bottle. Um, again, fill them up with a funnel, and this is a a, um, a bottling funnel that has a, a nice narrow neck that you can use to to stick into. Uh, various beer bottles and things that you might be bottling. Um, check the links below. A lot of people have trouble with these swing top bottles. It's quite simple. The trick is as you bring the cap up the side of the bottle and raise the bale, you want to turn the little cap upside down. Turn it upside down, raise the side, flip the cap over, close the side down. I could bottle these all day. Raise it up, flip it over, bring the side down. Simple. Your final product hopefully should give you a nice pop. And that old sound of shrepervescence that you're looking for. A little bit of ice. Delicious. Enjoy. Thanks for watching my video.